Hi, we're going to head down to southeastern New Mexico to take a look at an indicator species and its habitat. The high desert plains are among the last remaining homes of the lesser prairie chicken, a bird known for its noisy and entertaining springtime mating rituals. This dry land was once a patchwork of grasses and shrubs extending as far as the eye could see, and the prairie chickens were so abundant that they'd darken the sky when they took wing. The low-lying vegetation provided perfect ground cover to shield them from the view of predators like coyotes and snakes while they nested and foraged, and also protected them from the blistering sun. The plants and the insects that lived on them made for a perfect food source. But over the past hundred years, the chickens have disappeared from more than 90% of their traditional range. This is partly due to natural causes, such as extended droughts, as well as natural fluctuations in their population but the primary cause of this large decrease is loss of habitat. Overgrazing by cattle has reduced the amount of grassland that supplies important ground cover for nesting. To make room for still more grazing, herbicides have been used to kill off the other plants and shrubs, such as the native shinnery oak, which provides the prairie chickens with food, shelter, and nesting habitat. Some of the land has been converted to agricultural use, further reducing the amount of available habitat. The remaining habitat has been affected by fragmentation. Roads have been cut through the landscape, limiting the habitat's connectivity. Noise from roads and oil and gas drilling has also caused fragmentation, because the birds have trouble hearing each other's calls. This prevents them from maintaining the proper population distribution within their range. The invasion of trees and the installation of power poles attract new predators like hawks, who perch and nest there, putting the eggs and baby chicks in danger. A partnership among government agencies, ranchers, environmental groups, and oil and gas interests is now meeting regularly to find ways to restore the habitat so that it can support the many uses of the land in a sustainable way. BLM wildlife biologist Rand French in Roswell, New Mexico, works with ranchers and drilling companies to preserve the habitat and keeps a close watch on the health of the land. Let's check in with Rand and his son Ryan out in the field to see what's happening on the ground. Hi, my name is Ryan French. I'm a student of Brindo Middle School in Roswell, New Mexico. Right here I have my dad, Rand French, and he's going to tell us what he does for the BLM. Thanks, Ryan. As a biologist with the BLM, I'm responsible for the wildlife habitat for over 1.4 million acres within southeastern New Mexico. We deal with diverse issues and users of the land while providing and protecting wildlife habitat. Um, Rand, can you tell us what equipment you use out when you're out in the field? Yeah. We use numerous tools or gadgets as we call them within my field of work. Uh, if we're just going out and doing spring surveys for the lesser prairie chicken, we use sometimes a bionic eater. There's a lot of times because of the terrain that we're dealing with in the sandy soils, we cannot just go across country. So we use a bionic ear that has a microphone which allows me to hear great distance to at least locate these species so we can get a good population count and distribution map. We also do radio telemetry work. In the spring of the year, we capture hens, put radio collars on them, and we're able to follow them through all the four seasons on an annual basis. We put a little collar on them, this beeps out a signal regarding a frequency, and we use this receiver to mark in over a thousand different frequencies. We also do a lot of veg composition monitoring, and that's our standard, standard range monitoring where we use trend plot and a pace point. We put this down in strategic locations year after year and we measure overall grass composition, height, structure and change over time. For the lesser prairie chicken, nesting habitat is the most limiting factor and so we use the Robel pole. We do pace points, we put this pole in the ground and we're able to read the overall height of vegetation, primarily grasses, to see if we're meeting the habitat requirements necessary for the bird to survive. So, you can see that there's a lot of work being done here in New Mexico to assess the health of the prairie chicken habitat. Back to you in Phoenix. Hi again. Now we're going to go down to the Shinnery Oak habitat to take a look at how the prairie chickens are being tracked. Scientists like Luke Bell, a graduate student in range ecology, are collecting data to monitor the hatchlings' survival rates. During the mating season, he and his crew captured the hens and outfitted them with radio collars so that they could be tracked to their nests once the brood rearing season begins. Even with an antenna to pinpoint the location of a hen and her brood, he still needs a keen eye and a quick hand to capture the fast-moving chick. Once in hand, however, 
the chick settles down and relaxes, enabling Luke to begin his measurements. You can look at their weight, or you can look at their wing cord. And wing cords just like would just be like uh, taking a measurement from here to here on me. What you do is you know you have a known group of chicks, and you know what their age is, and then you look at the wing length on them, the wing cord length, or their weight, and you can graph that out on a graph, and you can look at kind of like a linear relationship based on their growth. And with that information, you can age unknown chicks. This helps him track the brood's survival rate over the course of a summer. A key factor affecting survival is the mixture of plants within the habitat. This is about the typical height, about 20 centimeters, that you'll find chinnery oak for brood foraging habitat. you also find a mixture of sand sage just about everywhere, whether it's brood foraging habitat, nesting habitat. We also find yuccas in a lot of brood foraging areas. This is a typical nest location. Actually, it was a successful nest. You still see some eggshell fragments from some hatched eggs. And this is just underneath the three on grass and we have some sand drop seed. At every chick location, I take the relative humidity, temperature, and wind speed at the chick's height and at two meters in height. And that way I can compare the chick location to the two meters so we can see like how much of a difference there is in climate. And we can see what sort of habitat parameters that these chicks select that might uh, create thermally usable space. Tracking the progress of the chicks helps scientists determine the prairie chicken's prospects for survival over the long term. Prairie chicken populations tend to go up and down naturally, but we've learned through their work that the overall population numbers are steadily dropping. That's it from Prairie Chicken Country. This is Hoku Donovan Smith in New Mexico. Back to you in the studio.